Hey guys, uh, today we're going to tie a parachute Adams. Um, it's a very effective mayfly imitation that um, is derived from the original Adams. The original Adams is a very effective mayfly um, imitation, but with a couple of drawbacks. Um, one of them was on very small patterns, you would see that the fish, as soon as it takes the fly, it would push the fly back with a hackle because the hackle um, actually closed the gape of the hook. Um, with a parachute fly, the hackle is completely out of the way, ensuring that you get more hookups. And um, the fly also sits a lot lower in the water and crea creates a very nice footprint. Um, for the hook, we'll be using Hanak size 12 dry fly hook. For the thread, we'll be using Griffith's Shear 14 0 in white. This is a very fine thread, but I like using it because you can actually split the thread even though it's that fine, and the thread also lays down very flat. For the tail, we'll be making use of Coq de Leon. For the wing post, we'll be making use of fluorescent pink Antron yarn. For the abdomen of the fly, we'll be making use of super fine dry fly dubbing in amber. For the thorax, uh, I made a blend of poly yarn and um, a hair's mask fibers. And for the hackle, I'll be using a yellow grizzly hackle from Whiting. First off, just uh, take a hook and place it in the vise. You can see this hook has a very nice wide gap attach your thread. Now just cover the hook shank with your thread. Every now and then just spin the bobbin to flatten the thread. This will just help with to prevent um, build up like a bulk build up of the body. For the tail, cut off about five or six fibers of Coq de Leon. For a fly this size, I'll use that many. On smaller flies, you could use even down to three fibers, that's fine. Make sure that the tips are aligned and cut them off. To measure, measure them against the length of the hook shank. This will give you a good idea and to keep, this will also help you to keep um, your fly's tails consistent. This is slightly longer, which is fine. Transfer that point to where you left your thread with a couple of pinch wraps. Just lock it in place. Unwrap your thread. Now pick up the thread just behind the fibers make one wrap this will make them stand out a little stand more proud and also secure them that's it these fibers are very stiff that's why we make use of coq de leon you can also make use of microfibits or even cock hackle you want something stiff that will support the fly's weight on the water surface make a couple of wraps and cut off the excess at a slight angle, so you don't create a bump. Wrap your thread forward. There's one more fiber there. Up to about a third up the hook shank. Now, cut off about four or five inches of your Antron yarn. Now place your antron yarn underneath your thread and on top of the, the shank, like that. Now make a couple of wraps just to secure it there in place, like that. Pull to a 90 degrees angle of the hook shank and make some figure of eight wraps 
to keep and secure it in place. Now pull the antron yarn up and while holding it in place run your thread around the antron yarn in an upwards direction touching turns. It might take some time to get used to because you need to keep tension on the antron yarn but the better post you build the more headaches it will prevent later on in the tie. For the um, post you can also make use of foam cylinders, I know a couple of tires prefer foam cylinders or um, another effective material is polyon that actually absorbs your floatants a lot better. Okay, that's fine, now just take your um, thread back to the base. And there you have your post tied in. Now run your thread back to the base of your tail. Wet your fingers slightly and select some dry fly dubbing for your abdomen and form a nice long very fine dubbing noodle. We're not going to make use of ribbing here. We want to keep this fly as light and buoyant as possible. Every now and then just turn your dubbing again just to ensure that you get a nice tight wind. Wrap it forward just leaving a slight gap between where you stop and the base of the post. Now it's time to tie in the hackle. Pull back your fibers like that, in that direction, and then clear the tip like that. You will see that the fly has a more colorful side and a less colorful side, or usually on natural colored fibers. Um, feathers you'll see it's the, the more colored side has more shine to it. Place that side with the most color towards the post and tie in the feather first along the hook then you cut off excess, secure it in place and make sure that you leave enough place of the base of the feather because you're going to wrap this around the post again to give some more structure to the post and you will be wrapping the hackle around the post. very important to plan the fly properly and to work very very structurally that's it now um, get some of the dubbing for the thorax don't use too much you can always add some later and with some wet fingers just dub this thorax might be too much that's it want to get a couple of wraps behind the post and then come forward and dub in front of the thorax 
pulling back any fibers just create a nice neat head for the head of this fly I'm just going to color the thread a little bit darker the Copic marker Now with your whip finishing tool, you do a whip finish. I'm not going to put on any head cement, I don't like that on my dry flies. That's it. Now onto the harder part of the fly, you take the fly out of the vise place it in a 90 degree angle. When it's at a 90 degree angle, you reapply the thread around the post as if it was the hook shank. Once secure, just cut off the tag end, secure it in place. Now, just split the hackle from the antron yarn to make sure there's no fibers trapped. Sometimes with antron yarn it tends to happen. And now while keeping it tight, especially on the first couple of wraps on the top there, just pull on the antron yarn and hackle your way down in touching turns. See that happens when you don't have enough tension on the hackle, but that's fine. We're going for it again. That's it. When you reach the bottom, just pull up some of these fibers and while guiding your thread around this hackle, lock it in place with three turns. Very carefully cut off the feather without cutting off the thread. Or too many of the fibers. Pull your hackle up again. I'm going to color the thread one more time. This is so that the thread just blends into the base of the hackle. Before I do the whip finish, going to cut the antron so that there's about a quarter of an inch left like that now just do a whip finish while guiding your thread around the hackle so that you don't trap fibers facing down. Put it in place, cut off the thread, put it back straight. And that is a parachute Adams.